This is the Next Level Racing GT Racer, the company's newest entry-level sim racing cockpit that comes in at a stunningly low price of only $400. Despite its entry-level price tag though, Next Level Racing has supposedly engineered this cockpit to swing way above its weight class. So today, I'll be putting those claims to the test as I go over all of the good and the bad I've experienced with this cockpit thus far. New from Next Level Racing, the GT Racer looks strikingly different from anything else offered by the company. The main frame is made from carbon steel with a black powder coated finish and is designed in a way to be extremely easy to assemble and unlike many entry level rigs, won't have a pole running down between your legs. From a design perspective, the frame is okay. It certainly doesn't look stunning or made for professionals, but they have done a decent job of making this rig look as good as possible. The GT Racer logo runs down the middle, and along with the GT Racer seat, which is essentially a rebranded Next Level Racing ESR2, looks decent for the money. Though targeted at the entry-level sim racing market, this cockpit will support up to 13Nm wheelbases, making it strikingly capable even for mid to high-end systems. At least, that's what Nextwell Racing claims. Adjustability won't be as plentiful as in higher-end chassis, but most of the essentials can be adjusted, notably the height and angle of the wheel plate and the shifter mount. Unfortunately, the pedal plate is largely fixed in place with only subtle horizontal adjustments available and no way to change the angle or height of them, which could be a big drawback if you don't find it comfortable. Another thing I will say about the adjustability of this chassis is that it's not as quick and as simple as in most other rigs I've tested before. For pretty much any minor adjustments, you will have to take out allen keys and a wrench, which will get annoying if consistently making changes. At the $400 price tag, I was pleasantly surprised to see included seat sliders underneath the seat, along with an included butt kicker mount, two things that many other companies charge extra for, even for much higher end rigs. Frankly, even having a shifter mount with an included universal handbrake plate is included here and not in several others I've tested. The seat found here is similar to those that are offered in Nextwell Racing's flagship models, and I was extremely surprised to see it come included with this chassis. Overall, it is very good and comfortable. It's made with suede and faux leather with neat red stitching. More than just that though, it's extremely adjustable as you can fully recline it forward to save space or fully retract it backwards to stargaze at night. Overall, it's probably the best seat included in a cockpit under $400. The biggest drawback I did face with it, however, was the significant movement I felt under hard braking and acceleration as the backrest would give some play. And this transitions well into my driving experience with the GT Racer, where there is lots of good and not so good to uncover. Putting this cockpit to the test with some demanding mid-range gear, there is lots to be said. Starting with the good, the pedal plate did a fantastic job at remaining perfectly rigid with no noticeable flex felt when driving. I was putting significant pressure on this pedal plate with the load cell Fanatec CSLs, which has a notoriously stiff brake pedal, and I was pleasantly surprised at its sturdiness. There is obviously a big trade-off here as the pedal plate is largely unadjustable, but at least it performs where it counts. Unfortunately, the pedal plate for me was the only place where I found a no noticeable flex on the GT Racer. Maxed out at 8Nm of torque, the wheel plate did give off some play, particularly at moments where significant input was required, like hitting a curb, crashing, and other similar instances. Several times I also had to re-tighten down the nuts and bolts on the wheel plate as they did tend to slightly loosen over time, resulting in noticeably more movement as I went on. Side-to-side -side movements on the wheel plate were sustained relatively well, but vertical movements as well as those when pushing and pulling on the wheel were significantly more noticeable. Of course, these are uncommon forces to be applying to the wheel when driving, but in rare circumstances or in very demanding driving disciplines, it did become noticeable to me.
Overall, what I will say regarding the flex in the wheel plate is the following. I'm confident that when using this cockpit with entry level gear like those from Logitech and Thrustmaster, you will have no problem when it comes to rigidity. Unfortunately, it's when upgrading to torqueier, heavier, and more demanding wheel bases where the GT Racer does begin to show its price tag. Again, even with the 8nm Fanatec GT DD Pro, I was able to feel more flex than I would like. This in mind, when I see that next level racing claims it can support up to 13nm wheel bases, I certainly have my doubts. A similar assessment is given to the shifter and handbrake plate. Used with the Moza Racing H-Pattern Shifter, which requires a good amount of force to actuate, some flex is both seen and felt. Being more gentle with my shifts and cruising down a road, there is no problem, but when passionately shifting through the gears while going 100 miles per hour, there most certainly is. Again, I tighten and re-tighten every nut and bolt in this rig to limit it as much as possible, but it is still there. Similarly again, if you are going to be using this rig with an entry level shifter, I doubt you'll have any problems. But when upgrading to more demanding gear, let alone a capable handbrake, I can't say I would be confident in the rigidity here. So overall, with the mid-range gear I was using, the GT Racer has its noticeable flaws, which really shouldn't surprise me though, seeing as it is an entry level chassis. Now of course, I've owned and used many entry level sim racing cockpits, and when compared to those, the GT Racer does excel in many ways. Most prominently, the seat, but also in many other ways such as eliminating a setter pole random between your legs, providing a seat slider, butt kicker mount, and an incredibly rigid pedal plate. I do think that more can be done by Nexwell Racing to increase the rigidity in both the wheel and shifter plate though. Not necessarily a big deal for users with entry level equipment, but certainly for those with direct drive systems and more realistic shifters and handbrakes. It's for that reason that I wouldn't recommend this chassis for those with more premium hardware, and it's also for that reason that Nexwell Racing offers an extensive lineup of mid and even high end cockpits. So with this all said, I think Nexlo Racing has hit it out of the park creating an entry level sim racing cockpit for entry level sim racers at an entry level price tag. The GT Racer doesn't look bad, it will hold up well with entry level equipment, and doesn't compromise on many aspects that several competitors, even at higher end price points, do. So to quickly sum up all of my thoughts in one sentence, I believe the GT Racer is an excellent stepping stone into the world of sim racing, but not the final destination for more serious sim racers. As always, let me know your thoughts on this product down in the comments below, and as always, thank you all for watching, stay safe, and have a fantastic rest of your day.